Alright, today I'm going to re be rebuilding the front control arms of my 94 Mustang. So here's the control arm, clean it up, pin it up, ball joints removed, bearings are removed. Um, not really going to go in so much on how to remove those. You can use a manual or search other YouTube videos to find that. What I will be doing is replacing the bushings with these aluminum Delrin bushings from Global West. These will help eliminate any movement or slop that are in the front control arms. Uh, these look like really good units, so we'll get these installed in there. So it's just a loom housing with uh, Delrin bushings. So these will press into each of the housings. And then this will get inserted, greased up. Let's get these put in. Bushings pressed in. Uh, didn't go in quite as easy as I thought. They kept wanting to go in kind of crooked and then uh, they provided this angle iron to slip in here to keep the ears from holding in and it kind of might be a little bit too big and it kind of kept it flared out so they didn't want to go in straight. We'll go ahead and get these bear, or we'll go ahead and get these bushings put in. Got to grease them up. Using marine grease. Gotta make sure you put the bell ring bushings up in the right positions. They have it in the documentation. So this, uh, these bushings actually move the whole control arm forward some. So that helps with uh, getting you more caster also. Okay, as you can see, this face on this side is larger than this one on this side. And then this is the front of the vehicle, so we'll move the whole control arm forward. Alright, we'll flip it over and we'll install the grease fittings. So that's another thing, when you're pressing in the aluminum bushings, you need to make sure you pay attention to where the grease fitting is. You want it to be accessible when it's installed on the car. Just kind of put those in nice and snug. You can then also put a little bit of grease in there. Alright, next thing I'm going to get installed in these arms new ball joint. So, this is the Steeda X2, so it's an extended ball joint. So, what this will do is we'll move this end of the control arm lower in the vehicle in relation to the, to the frame side. So that will help increase the roll center of the car on lower cars. Uh, so my car is lowered. I don't have aftermarket control arms or after my game member. This is a way to better the front suspension geometry 
in a stock like stock suspension style car. Um, these will just get pressed in here like so. And then this control arm will be all done. All right, just like that, both control arms are done. New extended ball joints, new Delrin aluminum bushings. Um, the bushings are more difficult to install than a normal polyurethane bushing, like this. Uh, so uh, these were installed probably about seven years ago and they still work in great condition. They pulled right out. Um, these should get much better control of the front suspension and allow it to move a lot better. So we'll see how they do. Let's get them installed. I'm not really going to go over installing the front suspension. It's basically just bolting everything up. So just do initiate time lapse. Alright, so why assembling this side, the ball joint fell out. Uh, doing a little bit of research, it seems uh, these that happens with these TX2s, which is kind of disappointing. You spend a lot of money on good ball joints and they fall out. Probably a uh, previous ball joint was maybe a little oversized that was in the, in the control arm. Um, driver's side is good, but so. I've looked it up on the internet and found a solution that I'm going to give a try to, to get these ball joints installed. Alright, so one of the solutions that I found was taking some press uh, shim stock. So I was able to buy this from Lowe's. So you put this around there to help to increase its uh, thickness. It seems like this is almost a perfect diameter to get around there. And then press the ball joint in with this uh, shim on there. Then what some guys have done is put a few tacks on the bottom to hold it in. So this one is good. To keep it from potentially falling out, I'm just going to take it put a couple tacks around on here to hold it in. This one I'm going to try the shim and then also put some tacks on it. All right, that one came out much better. Can't even see the brass anywhere around there. Um, yeah, so now I'll clean off a couple of these spots and put a good solid uh, tack, maybe two or three on each of these ball joints to keep them in place. All right, so cleaned off a couple spots. Really not a fan of welding the ball joints in, but I don't expect to be changing these ball joints anytime soon. And this is safer than it coming, than it popping out. Now we can install them and cue the time lapse.
this side set to 2.9 degrees. This side set at 3.2. So this side's a little bit more than the other side. They're relatively close. Um, I'm not going to go through the hassle right now of checking it all up and readjusting camber. I do need to check toe. Now that I have those Delrin bushings, I'm going to set the toe to zero. Since there's less flex in the control arm, I don't think the toe is going to change as much. Normally you do a little bit of toe in, so when you're driving the toe, you pull the toe out. But for autocross and some driving on the street, I'm going to set it to zero degrees. All right, after, after installing the ball joint and the spacers which raised the car up, both tires are now towed out quite a bit. So they're towed out an inch and three quarters. Just those back in. up the ball joint and bushing replacement. The only thing I have left is to get new sway bar end links because the one of them was bent so it had to be cut off. So I'll get that replaced and we'll see how the new ball joints and bushings do at the next autocross. Uh, it should help the turn in and less understeer of the car.